He is my buddy from the NFL Media Group. He will be in Las Vegas, Nevada, calling the action for the Los Angeles Chargers radio network locally here, um, as he does every single week. And uh, he's at Move the Sticks on uh, Twitter. And, uh, and he and Bucky Brooks have a terrific podcast for the NFL Media Group. He is my friend Daniel Jeremiah. How are you doing, DJ? I'm doing great, Rich. I, I got to tell you, I missed uh, I missed last week's game, as, as uh, a lot of people have, have had the same thing I did. I had a little bout with COVID last week. It was super easy. I fortunately didn't have any symptoms, so I was, I was fine. But I did miss the Charger game, and I did get a text message from Chargers General Manager Tom Telesco I believe yesterday, which said, "Hope you're feeling better. Uh, you better get ready. We've got Musburger this week." So it is, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, it's it is, Musburger it is, week for you, Jackpot week. baby. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, look, man. I feel like if this came, if it got physical up there, I feel like Matt Money Smith's got a got a pretty good shot with Musburger. <laughs> I could be in trouble with Lincoln Kennedy though, so that that yeah. might not end well. Dude, you never heard of Jimmy the Greek? Come on, you don't want a piece of Brent. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. It's history. This man has history. You don't want a piece of Brent. Nobody wants a piece of Brent, baby. I, I, I'll tell you what. Maybe I don't want to be looking live. At, at no, you don't. <laughs> nice. Just ask Eminem. You don't even know you're on a piece of Brent ever. Uh, uh, okay. It looks like Waller's coming back for this game, huh? For the Raiders. That oh, would be going to be fun, man. Right? So break it down yeah, for me. How's this coming for you, do you think? Well, it's going to be a great matchup, man. You go back and look at that first meeting. Um, it kind of was you know, a little bit surprising because coming into that game, the Chargers hadn't stopped the run. Uh, you know, the Raiders, you knew were going to run the ball. And the Chargers, you know, had this high-flying passing attack. Then you get out through the game, and it was a weird game. If you remember, remember there was the delay. Um, they come out in the field, and they got to go back in. It was delayed by an hour. Right. And then the Chargers come out there and run the ball down their throats. I think they ran for almost 170 yards. Austin Eckler had 117 yards, I believe, in that game and really just kind of controlled the line of scrimmage. The Raiders did not run the ball well at all. Um, and then Joey Bosa um, officially graduated uh, Leatherwood from tackle to guard uh, yes, in that game. <laughs> and so that that was just kind of a it was a it was a weird game. And now you look at what the Raiders have done. It's so impressive that they put themselves in this position after all that's gone on there. Mm -hmm. um, I think you got to give our buddy Mike a lot of credit. You yep. got to give Versace a lot of credit uh, to have them in this position, and they're playing really well. Hunter Renfro's is outstanding. Um, they, uh, you know, they're playing better along the offensive line. Their defensive front's playing really well, and now you get Waller back. So, for mm. my money. Um, mm. Waller and Derwin James is as fun a matchup yep. as, as we get to see yeah. uh, in the NFL. That is right. No question about it. What's what's your evaluation of Herbert here? I mean, I had Brandon Staley on yesterday and tried to ask him about, um, you know, what he's seen and how he's dealt with his second year. And I know his numbers are terrific, but there are games where – Herbert just looks a little bit, to be very honest with you, Daniel, lost. It, it looks like the offense is, is um, inconsistent at times this year for a kid that should be lighting it up uh, even more than he does. I, I don't know if that's fair or not. I, I'll give it to you. You've seen more of Charger football uh, in person than I've heard it on the radio from you. Yeah, well, I mean, look, there's been a couple hiccups. You know, you look at the Ravens game yep. where they just really struggled to move the football. That's Patriots the that game, out. the Patriots game too. Patriots, the Patriots have you know kind of befuddled the Chargers for two years. Um, in that game, I want to say that they moved the ball pretty well. The Texans game is one um, that I think everybody's just having a tough time figuring that out. When even though you look at all the guys you're missing, the Texans are missing a bunch of guys as well. You can't, you just can't lose that football game. And in that one. They moved it up and down the field. They just could not, you know, finish some early drives and settle for field goals. So, you know, I don't think he's had – I mean, gosh, the guy for his second year where he's where he is and what he's done is, is pretty incredible. But, you know, there's been, there's been a couple you'd like to have back. I think that's just normal, you know, kind of growing pains for a young quarterback. But I, I know when he's locked in, Rich, and he's at his best, um, it's, it's pretty – pretty special it's pretty fun to watch and i i know this kid you know going back to college think about the rose bowl he's been pretty good in those big in those big spots and this will be the biggest one of his career coming up on sunday night well i'll tell you what man uh, if the chargers win it there is a terrific possibility of herbert at burrow for a playoff mm -hmm. game i mean i wouldn't i mean you might get you might get herbert mahomes uh number three which the first could, two games have been unbelievable that's true so, too 
um, there's nothing uh, nothing wrong with that. I know it's it's funny when you kind of look at these matchups and you look at it in first blush. And I think if it if it ended today, I think they would go to Kansas City. And you go, oh man, the Chiefs. That's a tough one. You know, I don't know. That, you know, how good do you feel about that? Then you go, what's the alternative? Well, you know, Cincinnati. Well, who's hotter than them right now? You got, there's no easy one, you know, once you get into this point of the year. So you got to go through all those teams. I think the one team, ironically, um, that the Chargers would, would uh, match up the worst against is the Patriots. So I think from their standpoint, the Bills, you know, taking a hold of that division was, was good news because if you do get into the tournament, you wouldn't see the Patriots until a little later on. Well, Brockman, TJ, you guys just heard the difference between DJ and Mayock in terms of me having an on-air conversation with these guys in terms of evaluating. If I, because clearly uh, I was off the mark in my uh, question about Herbert, clearly. Mayock would have torn me to pieces. Probably. <laughs> Daniel, you, you, that was a very gentle, very, very gentle velvet way of saying I was wrong, that this, the, some, some of the inconsistency is, is, is part of, 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 of an NFL season, and, and, and then you moved on. Um, I appreciate his response. It's a long year. I'm, I am. Uh, I, I use kid gloves, but I'm going to be honest with you. There is a little ulterior motiva- uh, motivation for me because How's before that? I came on, I did hear something about a Rich Eisen trucker hat that is yet to be in my possession. Okay. So oh. I'm going to be a gentle. I'm going to be very gentle until okay. those arrive. <laughs> yes, here, it's here, yeah. Rich Eisen show logo on the front, party in the back, as though we were describing the Rich Eisen show trucker hat. Yeah, that's it. Right okay. there it is up yeah. on the screen for everyone to, to see. And go to richeisenshop.com. I've got my mug, which I. Uh, may or may not have been given. Um, <laughs> you, but, uh, it's okay. As, as, as we say in our promo for richeisenshop.com, it's uh, get the mug that uh, celebrities come on and five-finger discount for themselves. So if you did that, that's entirely fine. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah yeah, no, here. I, I, I might have blamed it on Adam Pally, but I, I, that was me. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Jeremiah here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, okay, back? so um, what's how do we evaluate Trevor Lawrence's first year? Do we? How do how do you how, how do we how do we do this right now? I don't know. It's not been good. I mean, um, the the problem is, Rich, to get a fair evaluation of any of these young quarterbacks, um, I I really go back to the three P's. Right? You've got to have the right play caller. You've got to have some protection. You've got to have some playmakers. He's over three. He doesn't have any of that support system that you need to be able to, you know, properly evaluate him. So. I don't know what you read into it. I think it's been, what, two touchdown passes since Halloween, uh, which is pretty incredible uh, when you look at the, the talent that he possesses. But they have got a lot of work uh, to do there in the offseason to try and support this kid. I mean, he was, wasn't was just me or you know any of the draft Knicks that they were high on this kid. The whole league was excited about Trevor Lawrence and, and believes in this kid. But, man, that was a, that was a rough introduction into the NFL. So you can't evaluate him is what you're saying. There's no way to uh, evaluate him because, and, no. you know, because Urban, uh, and, and it was such a dumpster fire with him there, and then the cupboard was already bare. And I guess who are the playmakers? Um, you know, Their best offensive they got hurt. playmaker was playing defense and returning kicks for the Detroit Lions. Agnew, right? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> right, well, and they also used a first-round pick on ATN. He got hurt. Right. Yeah. Um, James Robinson. I, I mean, he was he, he was th- the way they handled him this year is a total mystery. Befuddling. OK, so so you can't. So so then ra- after Mac Jones, clearly rank mm-hmm. rank the, the seasons for the rookie quarterback class for me. DJ. Well, you know, I I think it was so up and down for the rest of those guys. It's a little bit hard to slot them. And I'm fired up for Trey Lance, to be honest. I mean, I know. Uh, he didn't play much, but we just saw the other day. I think you can kind of see the makings of, of what he's going to be. Which like is really what? Exciting. What is that? Give me, give me, give me the two explosive. cents on that. He's going to be. He's going to provide explosive plays in the pass game, and his impact in the run game is not just going to be felt with what he does with the ball in his hands. It's the impact of having to account for him, uh, which is going to help the rest of the guys in the run game. So I, I just think it's a it's a really, really good fit there. And once he kind of gets more comfortable in that system and in that offense, you'll see it open up more. But I thought you saw glimpses of it. I mean, it was explosive plays down the field in the past game. Yeah, you're going to live with some miss, some misfires underneath. Um, but there's going to be a bunch of big plays. And then you're going to sprinkle him in running. And then the impact of him as a runner is going to help uh, with the rest of the run game. So I'm a big believer in Trey Lance. I, I've got to be honest, I thought in watching the tape last week of Zach Wilson, 
I came away from that as encouraged as I've been, you know, all year long. I think he's starting to slow down a little bit. Um, he's not, he's getting a little bit better protection, which helps, but you're in a game rich where you don't have your, you know, hasn't had left tackle the whole year, right? His backup who's played well and George Fant goes out early in that game. Your top two running backs are out. Your top three receivers are out and he's out there and he's got them in a position to, uh, you know, to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I'm, I'm excited about him as well. I think this is a huge off season. They've got a ton of picks. They've got a ton of money. Um, I think they've got a chance finally, hopefully to get your jets, um, turned around and then you know we go to you know talk about unfair evaluations with fields i mean he's in and out of the lineup their team's not very good uh, you know you see some flashes of uh, of what he can do there i'm excited about him but again to rank him is darn near impossible because of the situation these guys are in I, i'm i i've got to throw davis mills in there too right i mean the kid oh is... yeah no davis mills has been davis mills has been the second best behind max jones if you're looking at performance this year huh um, when I saw it up close and personal, he he has played the second best behind Mac Jones. He is very under control. Um, it doesn't look big for him at all. He can he can do everything you want to do, make every throw. Um, to me, I was talking to somebody the other day about Davis. I said, you know what he's going to be? I think he's going to have like a, a Kirk Cousins type career, where I think he'll probably settle in as a you know 13 to 16 you know quarterback in the league where. He can win a lot of games, and you might be looking over his shoulder trying to find the next guy, but it's just hard. You're going to have a hard time finding an upgrade. A few more minutes left with Daniel Jeremiah here on the Rich Eisen Show. The talent evaluation community that's about to convene in Mobile, Alabama and kick everything off uh, with uh, some, uh, some, some games uh, of some prospects, and then we all know Combine around the corner. What with your ear to the ground and your connection to this community was the conversation surrounding Matt Corral's decision to play, Kenny Pickett's decision to not play, their love of football, so on and so forth, Daniel Jeremiah. I, I can tell you, you get, uh, oh, it was really cool that, that Matt Corral was going to play in the game. Follow-up question. Does that impact your evaluation? No. Uh, Kenny Pickett is not playing in the game. Yeah, I wish he would have played. Does that impact your evaluation or opinion of him? No. Um, they're very, they're very brief conversations in that regard. These guys have uh, the haze in the barn. They put everything out there um, to evaluate them, and whether they do or don't play in that game really has no, no bearing on, on where they'll go in the draft. I, I go back to that one year where, uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey didn't play, yeah. and still, still goes where he goes in the top ten. Didn't impact him in that same game. Solomon Thomas does play, plays his you know, butt off and helped himself and, and launched himself into the top five. So you kind of see the benefits of playing, but I, I don't know that there's really a detriment to not playing. So there's no conversation about love of football? Nothing like that? No. Huh. No. I don't I think that I think that conversation left the room a long time ago. Um, and it sure as heck should have this year when you when you look at what we came off of last year and you look at the best rookies in the NFL and Jamar Chase, Rashawn Slater, and Micah Parsons, who had a whole year of no football, and I think it worked out quite well for those three teams. Yeah, and Lance pretty much had one too, right? With the exception yeah, of one exactly. game. Exactly. So, so no, I, I don't. I think that's. I think that's something that people in the media like to um, uh, lob around and, and think that these these discussions, and then there's these eighty year old scouts in rooms shaking their fists and frustration and. <laughs> Um, I just, you know, I, I don't think that really happens. Well, I mean, you know, I, in a way, you know, when I heard, because, you know, obviously I'm referring to what uh, Kirk Herbstreet and, um, and and Desmond Howard were saying on ESPN prior to the Rose Bowl that caught a lot of fire. I mean, I, I, I totally, and you and I feel similarly sometimes when we hear somebody's not going to spin it at the Combine, because that's our mm -hmm. broadcast, right? Like, that's our world, mm -hmm. and we wish they would. But when it all comes down to it, there's no... There's no red flag or evaluation that comes from that, is there? Like, no, either. I mean, I think does that go back? I want to say I'm trying to think back to the first time somebody didn't throw. Was that Andrew Luck? Maybe. I think that could even uh, predate that too, D D DJ. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I don't think did Eli throw at the combo? Yeah, you know what? You're, now that I mean, you say that, I, I don't think Eli did. Right. I mean, um, I don't. I don't know so, if he did either. So. No, but I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm anxious instead of instead of us. And not talking about you and me, but you know, obviously, we want to see these guys throw because it's fun and, yeah. and uh, it makes for a much better broadcast. But instead of you know the the uh, community kind of complaining about these guys not throwing, why don't we do something on our end to incentivize them to throw? 
Um, and whether that's a combination of cash and rich eyes and trucker hats, I don't know, but <laughs> yes. there's got to be something we can do. I appreciate you putting putting rich eyes and trucker hats on par with actual cold hard American cash, Daniel. I, I, I appreciate. You should combine that. it with the prices right and have him play plinko or something. Well, I mean, can you can you imagine though how much fun it would be if we said, all right, for each position group, whoever has the fastest forty is well fifty thousand dollars. If well, um, I mean, why not? I, I mean, yes. come on, Daniel. You know, uh, I'm all for having guys run 40s next to each other. You know, and I, I yeah. and I'm I'm all for turning it into a full on competition. But the scouting community wouldn't they blanch at it or no? Who well, they cares? Wouldn't... Who cares? They're going to they're going to complain. They're going to you know they complain when it when it's spread out over a couple extra days. But to be honest, I mean the Rams less less has kind of set the bar on that one where. They don't really bring many guys to Indy. They sit at home and watch it on TV like the rest. That's because they don't have they draft choices anymore, Daniel. Well, there's that. There's that. No, they <laughs> own the third round. That's Stop. that's um, that's right. They, uh, but I mean, look, I, I think teams are not bringing quite as many personnel as they used to there. But let's let's kind of embrace this thing. I mean, these teams are getting all the GPS numbers on these kids right. from college, so they have a pretty good idea of how fast and how fast they are and all that stuff already. But I just think, man, let's. Let's blow it out, man. Let's have some fun. So, full circle, like uh, Wilson and Olave not playing in the Rose Bowl and Pickett not playing, you know, in the Peach Bowl and Corral playing uh, in the Sugar Bowl and getting hurt. Their evaluations are going to be the same when it comes down to seeing them at the Combine, getting them on a grease board, interviewing them and seeing their pro day. That will not be affected based on what just happened in the bowl season is what you're saying. That. That will not. Now there, there might be. Uh, they might sit in a room and get an uncomfortable question from a grumpy coach or a grumpy scout. But at the end of the day, the people who are making those decisions and stacking that board, um, that's not going to have any impact whatsoever. Last thing for you, Daniel. The fact that Antonio Brown is still on the Bucks roster, uh, Florio and others are saying is because the Bucks are afraid somebody else might take him and use him against them in a playoff run or maybe even in the Super Bowl. Are our teams would you really believe an NFL team after the burning of the Steelers, Raiders, Patriots and now Bucks um would would say the fifth time will be different. Well, you just he's running out of teams. I mean, first of all, I mean that there's limiting options because he's he's burned so many of those bridges. I, I don't I can't imagine at this point in time the teams that are in the tournament or getting ready to be in the tournament um, that they want to bring in somebody like that to completely rock the boat of what's been, you know, obviously a successful season if you're getting your way into the playoffs. I just, I cannot imagine that anybody would do that. That would, I would be floored. I would be completely shocked if that were to take place. And has, has a player ever been cut on the sideline that you know of? Like, that just basically like you're done? During a game? No, I, a... I was at uh, I was calling the Chargers Bills game um, when uh, can't, who was the corner the corner he quit at halftime uh, for the Bills. Oh, that's right, uh, Dave Davis. But is that yeah? I, I, okay, yeah, and he left at halftime. Correct. Left at half. Yeah, we're watching the second half, and I go, uh, I'm looking at money. I'm like, what happened to him? He's not out. He's not out there anymore. Well, I guess this must have got hurt, or maybe he's got an upset stomach or something, and then. After the game, I ran into – I was down in the tunnel after the game was over waiting for the bus, and I ran into one of the Bills players that I knew going through the draft process. Was it Vontae Davis? Is that yeah, who it was? Yeah, yeah Vontae yeah. Davis. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, just curious. Like, what happened to Vontae Davis? He goes, oh, he quit. I go, at halftime? He goes, yeah. No, he left the stadium at halftime to quit. But I, I just like, – Wow, I've never seen that one before. Right, but at least he just left. He didn't take off his uniform and strip down and throw and wave goodbye to the crowd and run – you know, during a play, during a game, during a moment, you know what I'm saying? And and, and it just, I, I don't know, man, it just kind of surprises me or then and then depresses me because it doesn't surprise me that another team might actually take a shot at him after all. Yeah, of this. I, gosh, I would be, I, don't, I just can't see it, man. Maybe, I, I think Josina came out the other day and said she knows a team that would, would be interested in signing him. I just... I can't imagine how you how you get that up the chain to the, to your owner to sign off on that. That just seems crazy to me. Daniel Jeremiah, appreciate the time. Let's chat uh, in the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, have a great time right. in Vegas. Say hi to Brent for me. Don't go don't go full <laughs> anchorman in fisticuffs. Okay, just don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, no, I'll bring my anvil. We'll be uh, good. Next time I see you, I'll have a trucker hat for you. <laughs>
Oh yes, now we're talking. You just got to post it. You got to. You're an influencer. Don't forget. So <laughs> you know, don't forget. You got to influence people. You. All right, there you go. Daniel Jeremiah, right. everybody. Round of applause on the Mercedes-Benz van. Hey, buddy. Phone line right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Nice little golf clap for DJ. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.